We want to talk about the life of an overcomer. What is the life of an overcomer? A life of an overcomer is something that the Lord has put before us, and it is a condition of your salvation. Oh, yeah. Being an overcomer is a condition of your salvation. When you get saved and born again, that don't mean to go off in the la-la land and just look, let the devil whoop you until you die and go to heaven. When you got born again, there was something that came with the package of your salvation. There was something that came in your salvation. It was part of what God provided for you. It was not just the fact that you were saved and, and Jesus became your Lord. He made you an overcomer. Say an overcomer. He made you an overcomer. An overcomer is this. An overcomer does what? An overcomer succeeds in, in dealing, dealing with, with a problem or difficulty. Mm. An overcomer is one who succeeds in dealing with a problem or a difficulty. An overcomer is not one who just lets problems or difficulties run their course. You know, part of one of the, I would say, the burdens on my heart as, a, as, a, as, an, as an apostle is the apostle has received the burden and care for the churches. And so when you have that, there's certain things that grieve your heart just like they grieve the heart of the Lord Jesus. So what happened is there was a burden or a grieving on my heart, and it's in the area of healing. See, I've seen people who were sick under a spirit of sickness. Sickness was attacking their body. And instead of them confronting the sickness to overcome, they let the sickness run its course. They just let the sickness do what it do. Matter of fact, they become, they become an advocate for their sickness. They study. I remember telling a young woman years ago, she would say, well, you know, Pastor Devon, I'm dealing with this, um, you know, the sickness and all of this. And, and, uh, and she began to describe to me what it was. It had this, this old long medical name and, and, and all these different things. She was able to describe it because she had been researching. I said, so what are you doing with all that knowledge? You know, all these medical terms, of what's, what, what area of your body that is in, the medical community has been utilized to highlight the exact pinpoint target of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I said, but you're just sitting there not doing nothing with it. Well. You're, an expert at the, you're an expert at the thing that's destroying your life. And that knowledge was not given for you to, to be an advocate for your sickness. Right. That knowledge was given to you. You said, uh, uh, Apostle, I, I'm, being a, I'm under attack. I got a migraine headache. You said, what? You got a migraine headache, huh? So what you going to do about it? Well, I just know what I got. You just know what you got. If Jesus was given a name that is above every name, at the name, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, then that means that you need to apply the name of Jesus to that name and cast out migraine headache because it was given, you got the name. Jesus cast out devils and he asked the demon, what is your name? The demon gave up his name. The demon said, Legion. So what did Jesus do? Legion, get out of here. An overcomer is one who succeeds in dealing with a problem or difficulty. God has raised me up. He has raised this ministry up to deal with difficult matters. That's why it comes at you like that. That's why it comes that way. That's why it comes packaged like that. Because it's not that, it's not that the problem is greater than you. It's that your ability, what God has placed in you through Christ, is greater than any circumstance. And all it's doing is giving up, it's giving up its position. That's, that's one strategy of warfare. You never give up your position or your location. So when you don't give up your position or your, when you give up your position or your location, then your adversary, your enemy, your opponent knows where to place the attack at. In sickness, it's a, 
in spiritual warfare is a principle, but it is designed to eradicate sickness, poverty, lack, doubt, fear, curses. Children of Israel had to target the curse. Where did the curse come from? Because the Bible says the axe is laid to the root of the tree. God is revealing to overcome it. He, he, he is adamant about, about setting your attention on the things that are relevant, that equip you to overcome. He does the revealing. He says the things that are revealed belong to you. The things that are hidden belong to him. So he gives us revelation on what the issue is. And all we do is just talk to our friends and watch YouTube videos. You learn all of these. You ain't even went to school for medicine. You know all these medical terms. Yeah, I agree. Why do you think? Didn't he say speak those things and be not as though they were? As though they are. Yeah. How blessed are we that God has targeted? He said dementia. Oh, so Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind and cast out yes. every working of dementia, the yes. source and root of yes. all dementia. My mind is whole. My mind is clear. My mind is clean. I am delivered from every yes. manifestation of the spirit of dementia. I send fire on you, dementia, in the name. Just keep talking. Keep hitting it. Keep hitting it. A good boxer realizes that when the enemy weakness is, is exploited, you just keep hitting the weak area. If the enemy eye gets swole up, you ain't got to be the strongest puncher anymore. Just keep tapping that eye. Stay away from you. Just keep tapping that eye. That's what the enemy is telling. That's what the Lord is telling you about your enemy. To be an overcomer. An overcomer is one who succeeds. That's faith. In dealing with a problem or difficult, it does not avoid. It does not deny that there is a problem. Right. Deals with the problem. Wow. If you cannot deal with and confront the problem, mm. then you're not walking as an overcomer. You're walking yeah. as an undergoer. See? Undergoers just suffer through because they don't know how to use the authority that they've been given. Yeah. He said the overcomer succeeds in dealing with a problem or difficulty. These things to come to test what God is. Matter of fact, sometimes te test is a biblical word, but there's, there's a, even more to it. it. Yeah, that's it. Overcoming comes to establish the power that works in you because you need to see it working. That's good. You need to know how it works in you. Look at this. I said this is a condition of your salvation. Luke eleven twenty one. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. When a strong man armed, this is where attacks come into denominational churches, especially in the holiness crowd. Because holiness is God, holiness is right. But you need to be armed yeah. and holy. You can't just be holy because Jesus said when, this, when the evil spirit has come out of man, he goes into dry places. Then he comes back, seek, trying to come back into his house. He said he found a place swept and clean, but nobody defending it. Okay. I wonder, Stacey and I, we, you know, years looking, looking for homes and everything. And they, we go into these new, new subdivisions and they have a model home. And I sat there and said, man, why they got model home? You look at the model home, you walk through there and you see the amenities and you know it looks nice. And then you walk out of there and you see the little keypad and it's an alarm on a model home. I said, why they put the alarm on a model home? He said, even though nobody lives here, we still have to protect it. There's still, measure, there's still measures in place to defend it because eventually somebody will occupy. The holiness crowd is under the impression nothing wrong with holiness. God is holy, but God is also a conquering king. He has an army. You ain't going to get to the holiness before you have to deal with this. With the, Jesus said, I could call 10 legions of 12 legions of angels. He said, you won't even, you, you won't even get close to the holiness. Too much you have to deal with. We need to have a defense. He said when a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when what? 
But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he shall take it away. Or he take said it when from he comes him. upon him and overcomes him, he does what? Take it from him, all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. Yeah, see, that's, that's the enemy testing your armor. First, first the, enemy, um, the enemy will tap on your armor just, just to see what you'll do. The enemy, the, the, the enemy is, um, the Bible said that patience have its perfect work. And this, this is not glorification of the enemy. It's just understanding demonology. The enemy will test your armor yeah. to see what you'll do. They got the guys, I don't know what they are, but uh, they, they like uh, in uh, London or England, they at the palace, they got the, the Q-tip on top of their head. <laughs> what it is? So, yeah, they ain't, ain't called no shako. That's what they call? There you go. You the teacher, though. But anyway, this guy is standing, he's guarding the palace. And he's a guard. He's a, he's a soldier who's guarding the palace. And people, people got this thing about testing these guys. You know, and the guys literally like, you know, they take pictures, they get all this face, da 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 But when they touch him, I seen one of them dudes go off. They arrested somebody because they was like, look, don't touch my outfit, don't touch my armor, don't touch my authority. When a stronger man comes in, he comes in first to attack your armor. The attack of the enemy is to get your armor off of you. Not your gift, because your gift ain't your armor. Come on! Your gift is, your, your armor is the thing that fortifies your gift. It's the thing that protects your gift. It's the cup that carries the anointing. If there's something wrong with the cup, then the oil spills out. He said a stronger man shall come upon him, overcome him, and he take from him all his armor wherein he is trusted. That means that there's always an attack against your foundation. Yes. The enemy is always foundation first. The truth that you were rooted in ground, the name of Jesus, the word of God, the Holy Spirit. That, that's always the enemy, what the enemy is testing first to get you to compromise. Yeah. He said all his armor wearing, he trusted and divided his spoils. He that is not with me is what? Against me. He said, listen, if you're not going to overcome, you're not a part of me. Come on. Oh, I know, I know. It seemed a little far-fetched, but I'll show you. He that is not with me is what? Against me. Jesus, that's not just walking with him. That's walking in his power, his authority, walking with the mind of Christ. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me does what? Scattereth. If you ain't gathering with me, you scattering. That means you, mean you went from son to hireling. You went from sheep to wolf. Well. Romans 12, 21 say what? Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. He said don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know how huge that is? You know my favorite superhero is? I'm going to let y'all get. Can y'all guess? No. Not even close. Oh, there you go. Batman. Because Batman is, first of all, a regular dude. Y'all be forgetting that. You like people with lightning coming out their fists and all that. Batman the only regular dude that can hang with supernatural people. Batman enemy is just evil. His evil is a principality. His, 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 his enemy, his adversary is a principality, not a particular person. You manifest evil, yeah. Batman coming at you. Absolutely. Now, don't go back and watch Batman after this. <laughs> That's all right, Brandon. That's all right. He said, but overcome evil with good. That means that the good that's working in you is designed to overcome evil, the whole thing that evil is. That's huge. That's big. That's saying that, that, that the power that's working in you to do good, the good one, the one that's good, the only one that's good, God himself is working in you to overcome all facets of evil, natural and spiritual. Does that make sense? Look, we're talking about an overcomer. Here's the principalities. Jezebel. Jezebel is a spirit. 
that manifest through a person to bring about evil, to bring about disruption in the house of God, especially. Jezebel targets the house of God, especially the house of God, because the house of God is ordered and aligned after the will of God. Yeah. It's designed to offset it. Whenever there is an attempt to offset God's order in any facet, Jezebel is working. Yeah. Jezebel can be either male or female, but it's predominantly female. Look at this. Let me give you some attributes of Jezebel. Because this power to overcome is in us to overcome every, every adversary that we're faced with. There is a, there is a, there is a, 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 a network, if I could explain it, best way I could explain it is there's a network working in the church to bring about failure in the body of Christ, but God has put measures in place. Yeah. Yeah. So let's first look at Jezebel. What does Jezebel do? Jezebel will usurp the authority of the set man to control people. Yeah. That's Jezebel. Whenever you see it, wherever you see it, Jezebel is very organizational. Loves organizations. I was talking to a man of God about this pastor who was struggling making decisions where his anointing was concerned, where his office was concerned. He was anointed, but he was wrestling where his office was concerned, meaning that he had, he had the power of influence, influence. He had the power of gathering. But then the office itself was where he was wrestling. So a lot of homosexuals would come to the church, but, and, and he loves people. So homosexuals come to the church, and he want to love them. He want them to get saved. He want them to get filled with the Holy Spirit. He want them to live a godly life. But they want to remain in homosexuality and use their gifts in the church. So he having a problem with making a dip, making a con, making a making a decision between his heart and his office. So he wrestled with it. I said, "How here's how you know that the spirit is demonic. Anybody who has been in any time, has anybody been in sin in this room?" Did you being in sin make you want to come up and preach? No. I ain't halfway want to come to try to drag myself in here. Why do you feel you need to do something even though you're in full-blown sin? Maybe it could be because you got a reprobate mind or your conscience has been seared with a hot iron. You don't want to stop sinning and you want to come up here? Yeah. That's why you shut that spirit down. If I was under any type of sin, whatever it is, my, my, my first approach would be to come to the Lord Jesus. That's why we tell people, just sit up under the word. Let the word minister to you. Let the Lord affect your heart. You, you, regardless, of, I don't care what you're in. You're a fornicator or a homosexual. Sit up under the word. What compels you to come up here and be visual? Maybe it's because you don't have a conscience. So you can do what you do and do anything. Mm -hmm. So the pastor struggled because it was a Jezebel spirit. Not right, out of order, out the will of God, but compulsive about being in the microphone mm -hmm. and being visual and being heard and singing and playing and doing stuff. I need to have a position in the house of the Lord. Nathan, the prophet, rebuked David, the king. David didn't go, man, clean off my throne, man, put, clean my robes up. David went sackcloth and ashes. He said, no, there's no way. Right now, I don't even, I don't even know if I'm worthy to be cut. Outside of God's calling, I can't even see what God was seeing me with what I've done. He's just ashamed of what he did. How, how is it that people not ashamed of what they did no more? Because they got a revelation of grace? He said, should we continue sinning no grace would abound? Jezebel is a, is a spirit that's sin right in front of you with no sense of conviction whatsoever. Jezebel will use victimization as leverage to gain control over people. Jezebel uses the victim spirit. I understand, girl. Men, all men are dogs. So you ain't had nothing to do with that? He beat me. Why you ain't leaving? How long you been beating? Ten years? Why can't you leave? 
Could it, could, it be, could it be that a provoker met up with, with an abuser? Maybe, maybe you provoke him to anger. How are your words? Why do you feel tethered to the person that's abusing you? Unless you had a part to play in it. He said grievous words stir up anger. Are you argumentative? Confrontational? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, in Christ ain't nobody got an excuse. I don't advocate for no domestic violence, but I will tell you is this. I can tell you that when a person does not leave, they are connected to something that won't let them leave. And I promise you it's not the abuse. But it could be that God never told you to get in that relationship anyway, but you're trying to prove to your mama who told you to stop why it's going to work out. You're trying to defy your mama through your disobedience. Yeah. So you stay at the house and get beat instead of leaving. Yeah. Come on, today. It's Jezebel. Say Jezebel. Jezebel. Jezebel will use the, the victimization as leverage to gain control over people. Jezebel will use the concept of order for means of control without the truth of order. You listen to me because I'm an apostle and not the order. That is governed, the, that governs the apostle. You can't be nothing in here. You can wear, you can, you can come in here with a Jesus t You come in here with a pastor t-shirt on. I'm still holding you accountable to what the Bible says that a pastor is. Not your ability to influence people because sometimes people have a Messiah complex and they can become, they're very easily deceived because people follow charisma over truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, you de so you deceive your ministers yeah. <laughs> by validating them through their charisma. You yeah. affirm their, er their errant behavior. Mm -hmm. But you ain't the first one. That's what happened with Aaron and the children of Israel. Aaron was a Levitical priest. And the people said, we need something to worship. You're the one, you're the man of God. You supply from, you give it, you got to, you, you supply from heaven to mankind. You provide a service from heaven to mankind. Give us something to worship. Call me. I need you to call me. That, that's, that's the golden calf for today. You can't make it a week without somebody. You, you're so obsessed that you made every, every minister your counselor. And the problem is the grace of counsel does not always rest on a, on a, on a five-fold ministry gift because the Holy Spirit is the counselor. So you deny the Holy Ghost, and then you put false conditions on your minister. Yeah, that's good. I ain't heard from them in a month. You got the Holy Ghost? Yeah. You got the Word? Yeah. You saved? Yeah. Did God save you before you came here? Yeah. So how is it that if you couldn't get to me that you were somehow trapped or under bondage and you could not break free from the devil when you got all the tools that I got? It's the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel. We're talking about being an overcomer. Jezebel will always wash the outside of the cup, but the inside is always dirty. When they put the squeeze on you, it, what's, all, what's in there always comes out. All you got to do, you ever want to test the Jezebel, just tell them no and, yeah. and stick with it. Just tell them no. That manifests on you. They'll do it. That's the truth. Just tell them no. Nope, not my assignment. Yep. But, you, but, but you, I know you can't. No. Yeah. It's not my assignment. Wow. Mm -mm. You're supposed to be a Christian. Huh? No. Ain't my assignment. It's Jezebel. It's trying, to, it's trying to get you to compromise your standard. The Bible said, let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Anything else is from the devil. Yeah. If, I can, if, I can, if, if I can cause you to compromise in your yeses and nos, then I know that I can attack your life. That's the same way the way the Bible says don't, make a, it says, don't make a vow and not keep it. It's better for you not to say, hey, God sent me here. It's better for you not to say God is dealing with me about helping and being involved in the ministry. It's better for you not to say that. 
Just say, I believe that I should help. Yeah. That don't mean we're going to put you up. Right. That just means that, that until the Lord reveals, unless the Lord gives me agreement, I'm not going to put you up. Right. And th- unless he get, how can two walk together except they agree? Jezebel will offset the family order. Jezebel is anti-family. It offsets the family order. What is, what is offsetting the family order? The man is here. God over Christ, Christ over man, man over the woman, woman over the children. I told the men and I had to rebuke some of the men because I said, if you're telling your daughter that with the man that she with, that, that, that man, you, you don't submit to a man until you give him something to submit to. I said, you snared your daughter. She's operating out of your, your error. Give him something to submit to. Well, if that, why did you marry him? If you weren't going to align to God's order. If the man is the head and he's talking about marriage, then why did you get married if you're not going to submit to your husband? Boy, that's... <laughs> Come on, uh, yeah. Why, why are you waiting to submit to him when upon marriage he says submit to your husband? Because here's the thing, this is, how low level that le- this is how low that level of thinking goes. That level of thinking says to the woman, don't submit to him until he gives you something to submit to. What if the man said, well, I'm not going to love you like Christ loved the church and gave his life? If you, if you tit for tat, if you're thinking that low, then you might as well receive the other side of it. He ain't got to love you because he ain't nothing to submit to yet. I said, if a father sees his daughter with that, first of all, the criteria and condition for marriage is already as set, uh, as set by God once you cross the threshold of covenant. Amen. Once you marry him and stood before God, you submit to him. He'd love you and die for you like Christ loved the church, period, regardless of what he do. Yeah. You say, no, nah, but apostle, he did that. Well, uh, your argument is with Sarah. Uh-oh. Your argument is with Noah, with Noah's wife. That you, I got a whole list of Bible people that you can have a full-blown argument with. You'll be up all night, I promise you. <laughs> if, you're gonna get, if you're not going to submit, don't get married. Amen. It's just that easy. Yeah, I agree. yeah, you have a problem with all forms of leadership. You have a yeah. problem. Matter of fact, you, you're, perpetuating it, you're perpetuating that even in your relationship with God. Because yeah. you ain't yielded to God. Because when it comes to God, it's about who's Lord. If God, te- if God tell me to do something because he's the Lord of my life, I do it. He said do it, I just do it. He said, I want you to love that person. That has nothing to do with how they act. It has all to do with what he said. See, a lot of people are not married or they're sabotaging their own relationships because they set in conditions that God didn't set. Yeah. That matter of fact, they believe that they loving their wife or they're submitting to their husband does not work, so they try other methods. Yeah. And they sabotage. Yeah. Who is that for? Come on, I don't know. I, ha- I don't know if I met you yet, but uh, welcome uh, to Without Limits. And thank you for shopping at Walmart. Mm-hmm. Jezebel leans more towards separation, division, and emphasis on gender and not emphasis on creation roles. That's being a little too, that, that's, 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 that's men ministry that, that lean a little too heavily toward males and not the model of Christ-likeness in men. Amen. That's the women's ministry that becomes an advocate for women and, and and causes the influence of the women to be swayed. Don't you know there's a scripture? It says that, that, that there are spirits sent to lead astray silly women. That's yeah. Don't mean that women are silly. Mm-hmm. It just means that the silly get deceived. Yeah. Yeah. Jezebel. Jezebelic ministry. Offsets the family. Yeah, that's it. Ministry. These are ministries that can talk on the phone all day about spiritual issues, but neglect their family who is present. 
You're talking all things spiritually, but you're actually, you're actually guilty of neglect. Because everybody's fighting for your time that deserves your time, but you think it's for your phone people. Teach the people. Teach them. Jezebel has an unteachable spirit with no meekness. Will not sit down and listen to be taught. Does, uh, uh, undermines constituted authority. Jezebel. Jezebel's love to be married because they need somebody's authority to offset their level of deception. They need, they, need, they need some type of hierarchy to influence because they're not powerful alone. Jezebel is a prime candidate for demonic oppression and deception. It's just so quiet in here. It was just loud. It was loud, wasn't it? Sure was. Jezebel will imbibe any spirit through personality, character traits, and mannerisms. Jezebel picks up stuff from anything that looks like power. Anything that looks like power, that's what Jezebel is after, yeah. Anything that looks like power. I go to a prophet, I go to a psychic, I go to a diviner, I go to somebody who just talk a lot. Anything look like power. Jezebel does not have, Jezebel does not have the filter in order to distinguish between truth and a lie. Jezebel has no natural affection is triggered and motivated by trauma and always needs trauma as fuel to demonstrate. Does not know the way of peace. Always needs an enemy. You ever been around somebody, they yeah. always need an enemy? Yeah. They always need to have something wrong. You know what's wrong with the government? They be like, yeah. yeah. They always need to have something wrong. Well, you know what's wrong with something. They can't nothing never be right. Let's go drive to Disneyland. They're like, man, I can't stand. All these potholes in the road, it's like we going to Disneyland. Right. Right. Can you chill till we get to Disneyland? Why you go? It's the happiest place on earth. The teacup ride. And How you going to be at Disneyland with a mad person? It's the person who complain all the way through. That's Jezebel. Jezebel cannot see, cannot see the hope through joy. Whenever you don't have the joy, your hope is corrupted. So when a person, when it's a bad situation, the, 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 the spirit of faith causes you to speak those things that be not as though they were. Spirit of Jezebel causes you to always highlight and intensify the problems because you cannot see what's on the other side of it. Yeah. Didn't it say Jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? So he's like, man, that cross bull, how can, man, how can, what kind of you, what kind of wood they using on them crosses this week? No. No. Did they sanitize the nails? No. Jesus says, for the joy that's been set before me, no matter how bad it is, I'll just endure it. Because Jezebel's try to control their suffering. When God says suffer through because you come, you're becoming more like me. No, no, no. I want to control it. I got to control it. I'm, I'm going to tell you how I should suffer because I know what's best for my life. I know what's right. I'm, I'm going to tell the teacher what the homework going to be. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, you ain't graduated high school. You're trying to tell me what the homework's supposed to be. That's what Jezebel does. Tries to control it. Every Jezebel... You cannot have Jezebel without Ahab. Ahab is typically a man. It's a male spirit. It's a man. Ahab is the counterpart for Jezebel. Jezebel in the Old Testament was a woman. She was a, she was a queen of Israel. She was a queen of an anointed kingdom, which was Israel, God's kingdom. But she married Jahab. I mean, excuse me, Ahab. Ahab is the guy. Ahab... Just like Jezebel is in Revelation at the end, she went from Old Testament to New Testament, Ahab is there too. Who is Ahab? Ahab is the church. Ahab is not one particular person. It's leadership in the church that allows Jezebel to do whatever she wants to do. Didn't, didn't Jesus say in the book of Revelation, he said, you allowed that woman Jezebel. To teach. You allowed her. You permitted her. 
and she sent my servants into a bed of fornication. She caused them to fornicate and commit adultery. How does that happen? Does it mean everybody in the church having sex? No. What it means is that people begin to operate in inordinate affections, meaning that you don't have a love for your husband and children. You don't have a love for your wife. Now you're ministry obsessed. Yep. The, only, the only person that has the ability, has the right to be ministry obsessed is a single person. Outside of that, you're neglecting your responsibility. You are breaking covenant. The only one that can do it is a single person. Because if a married person takes on demands from the church and all of their time is occupied by ministry, they are out of the will of God. Even though they're helping the church. Why? Because the married person is given to please their spouse. Amen. Yeah. Your job is to please your spouse. Yeah. If you are a mother or a father, part of your responsibility as a mother or father is to raise your children. Right. Church, church you, have, you, you, you deal with church in components when you're a married person, when you're a parent. But when you're single, you're married to Christ. A single person has the opportunity to be there until it, be there all night. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you got a spouse, if your husband don't come to church, you come to church and then you stay at church all night to where your husband is wondering where you are. Come on. But they were still talking. I don't care what they saying. You need to stop. You need to, you need to let them know. Or you need to take your butt home. Is that too? No. Is that too much? If church is over and you having a uh, and you having a two hour conversation in the parking lot and you are a spouse, and for some reason you can't cut the conversation to at least let your spouse know, hey, I'm out talking in the parking lot. I'm gonna be talking for a while. Oh, I know you. Yeah. Okay, y'all super D. Y'all want y'all y'all want the, gl the glitter from the glory. I, I, get, I know you. I know you. I know what you're about. You want glitter, huh? Sleeping on you gonna be sleeping on the couch with your glitter. You gonna have glitter on your couch. I'm just letting you know. I love you, but I gotta tell you the truth. Ahab is the one. Let me put that up there. Y'all ain't saying that. Ahab is the counterpoint part to Jezebel. Ahab is the one who actually fuels Jezebel. Yeah. Whether it's in the church or the workplace, whenever there is a Jezebel, Jezebel will always capitalize on the authority that has not been sanctioned to her. She just won't do it. Because she's under the impression that everything is equal. Yeah. And everything is not equal. That is correct. Come on, teach. If my job is to give my life for my wife, and a burglar come into the house or the alarm go off, I don't say, well, you know, we equal, so why don't you run down there and handle that? I think there's a stick downstairs in the garage, but you got to get through the burglar. No, it's not all equal. It ain't all. It's not all equal. Men come under the judgment of taking care of their home. Any man who is living less than the ability to take care of their home and provide for their wife is under judgment. It ain't easy being the one who's always accountable. It ain't easy being the one who's going to be held accountable first. The worst whooping is the first whooping because they fresh. Yeah, some of y'all was the youngest and got, you got a woo out whooping. You don't know what it's like getting that first one. Ahab is the one who deferred all power and responsibility to his helper. When you defer all power and responsibility to your helper, you embolden your helper to think like the leader. That means he trusted in her more than he trusted in God. 
He looked to her instruction instead of seeking God for himself and hearing the will of the Lord. He didn't operate in patience. He made a hasty, anxious decision and got people involved in the decision making that did not have the authority that he carried. He voted instead of decided. Why did he make them vote? Because he didn't, want to re he didn't want the responsibility that came with making the final decision. Because sometimes making the final decision comes with judgment. It's amazing how Sarah called Abraham master. And she did that on purpose. Number one, she was speaking to his destiny, but she was also speaking prophetically to the fact that if you make a, a bad decision, we go through it together. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to control all of your decisions because I understand that the grace is on the grace is still with the order even if we make bad decisions. Why do bad decisions happen amongst marital partners, against spouses, against husband and wife? Because if the helper is resisting the leader, when the bad decision, when the effects of the bad decision come in, it's worse. Why? Because you broke agreement. It's not just the bad, all of us make bad decisions. All of us make, the grace of God has covered me in plenty of bad decisions. Yeah. There were things that just did not work out the way that I thought. But because I kept order, God continued to prosper me. He still made a way. He opened the door for me. The door remained open for me. He said, because even in failure, as long as you keep order, then I'll keep you. Yeah. That's true. Ahab is a church. Because the church will allow for something that's unregulated, unsanctioned, out the will of God, and will not stand for the truth. The next one is, we're talking about an overcomer. Is Elijah? Man, I thought Elijah was the dude. Man, I, how can you not love Elijah? I'm like, I'm like, after the father and the son, man, after like maybe Paul or something, I'm like, man, where Elijah at? When I go to heaven, I just be like, man, I just, I'm going to just fist bump Elijah. I'm like, man, he was cold. But Elijah... Is right there in the same group. Elijah is the anointed prophet of God, full of power, full of anointing, full of strength. This is the guy that called down fire from heaven. This is the guy with, with supernatural. He liked the flash. He got the, the ability to run faster than a, than a chariot, than a horse with a chariot. A man was able to run faster than a horse with a chariot. Unheard of in that day. Power of God came upon Elijah so mightily. Tangible fire from heaven called down. Bam. He was a prophet. He was a template for the, for the prophet. Elijah was something special. He was powerful. But Elijah was intimidated. Elijah was the prophet that still wrestled with fear even though he saw the supernatural. He has such acquaintance with the supernatural that he can call it. He can call, he can call it to be dark. He can cause it to stop raining. He can call down fire from heaven. All these things that God had given him to do, but he was still intimidated because he ran from Jezebel. See, if you got, rob, if you got rabbit in your blood, you have not embraced being an overcomer. You got rabbit in your blood. Yeah, I was, watching a, I was watching a clip from Roots, and then they, they cut Kunta Kinte's foot off for running. <laughs> they cut his foot off because he was a run he was one that could not accept the bondage of slavery elijah ran he ran he was intimidated by jezebel he saw things that were not in line with the will of God because jezebel on one hand will use a measure in righteousness but then use a measure in evil so they never could really nail down what she was doing. And she was anointed queen of Israel. Yeah. She had authority. She had governmental authority. Yeah. Totally out of order. Elijah was the one with all that power. Miracle working power was intimidated by Jezebel. But then there is this guy. Jehu, Jehu that's my man. Jehu. Jehu was my guy. Jehu is the Old Testament template for deliverance. Jehu was the one. Jehu was the executioner prophet. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, because your conference people don't tell you about this guy. Jehu was the bully prophet. Jehu didn't take no stuff. Jehu was the one who said, we're not going for it. The oppression is over. The denial, the denial of accountability is over. Now we'll take accountability. Right? Look at this. Jehu is the Old Testament model for deliverance. Jehu is the God. Jehu is the righteous indignation. That spirit rises up in you where you don't let it happen. Jeez. Especially men. You see, the enemy is always testing those that have been given authority to see what you'll allow. That's good. Trying to see what you'll permit. What, what, what will you permit in your house? Whoa. I asked the men, I said, you know, who your, you know who all your wife friends are? I said, man, you might have a witch. You might have an Atlanta housewife mixed in there. You might have a stripper mixed up in it. You might have all kind of people. Do you know the people that are influencing who got your wife ear? Here's one way to know. She won't listen to you. Because God don't have her ear if she won't listen to you. So who's she listening to? Oh, it's somebody you got to scan. You got to filter their friends sometime. Yeah. Wives, you got to filter your husband friend. If he don't want you to know who they are, it's something de- evil about them. Man, oh, no, no, you know. That's Lump Lump. It's like, what, what, what? Did his mama name him? Did the mama hold the baby and say Lump Lump? Why you got why you got an alter ego and you friends with that? Jehu was the one that didn't let it happen. Jehu was the offendable prophet. He is the one who offends. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. Look at 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. I want to show you something. Because I can tell you, whether it's in the order of the church, governmental order, whether it's in the structure of the home, whether it's under the structure of parenting, you cannot let the enemy have your children, Ebony, because they after him. But you the protector. You the one called. Second Kings nine and thirty says what? Out of King James. Yes. Give me the NIV. Come on, Troy. Put it up on the what you call it. NIV. You want me to read or you may wait? No. Go ahead. Second Kings. Second Kings nine thirty. What does it say? Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard about it, she put, an eye, she put on eye makeup, arranged her hair, and looked out of a window. This is the group who act right when they know somebody coming with authority. Come on. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is for your, for your workplace. You know the boss watching, so you start acting like you be doing well, your job. Yeah. Well. You just got a Jezebel spirit on you. Your boss, Jehu. Yeah. Your boss come, you be. <laughs> Perpetrating. Perpetrating. Little purper. What does it say? Then Jehu went to Jezreel. When Jezebel heard about it, she fixed herself up. She, she put on eye makeup, arranged her hair, and looked out of the window. Why did Jezebel deal with the prophet Jehu like that. Why did she fix herself up? Because she was a person who practiced flattery. Come on. She knew, matter of fact, the things that she got was accomplished through, through flattery. So that means that her worship unto God was flattery. She knew to fix herself up under the impression that she was fooling God. Then when somebody came around to bring her into authority, she would always fix herself up because she needed influence through the flesh. She influenced through flattery. She was a flatterer. Jeez. Her worship was not genuine. Come on. Her honor was not genuine. I tell the guys, I say, you work from the home, man, you need to get up, brush your teeth, wash your face, and get dressed if you're working from home. Because you're still a person of honor. You don't lay around the house looking like a vagabond just because you can work from home. I did it in prison. Why wouldn't I do it out on the streets? Why, 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 do you clean, why do you clean yourself up for the people who hate your guts and all they do is backbite and lie on you? And you, they get your best behavior. Yeah. Come on and teach. 
But now God make you independent and all your standards are gone. Yeah. No order. He might send you back into the workplace because he get the best out of you like well, that. Yeah. Brush your feet, brush your, brush your face, wash your teeth. <laughs> brush your face, wash your teeth. What do you say? As Jehu entered the gate. As she Jehu entered the gate, she fixed herself up because she knew Jehu was coming. And she asked, what? Have you come in peace, you Zimri? You murderer of your master. Stop. Whoa. Then she throw a shot. Look at your neighbor and say, shots fired. She throwing shots. Why you coming here? What Jezebel did was brung up something that was wrong with Jehu. Because she's the one who says, if I can find something wrong with you, I don't have to live in order. Right. Right. You teaching. I need you to take out the trash. Well, what about your shoe? Come on. Come on. Make it plain. The theme is the trash. Yeah. And we'll need to go to nothing else until we get compliance that the trash needs to be done. That's right. <laughs> J.U. See, Jezebel was an was a enhanced version. Jezebel manifests like this. Yeah. Just say you don't want to do it instead of trying to find something exactly. wrong with me. Teach the people, man. Just, if you can't receive your correction, don't try to find something wrong with me. I'm still in the office, and there's something wrong. It's something wrong with every police officer that has the ability to kill you. Yeah. But in his office, he's still in order. He said, Jehu entered the gate. Have you come in peace? You Zimri, you murderer of your master. And he looked out, out the window and used his authority. He used his words and called out. He did not play into her devices. He did. This is where. Let me tell you something. You want to have a. You want to have a blessed relationship. You want to walk in authority. Stop defending yourself. Exactly. For stuff that you didn't do. Watch out when the spirit of an accuser tries to come in because yep. accusers process like this. If they accuse you and you get in the flesh, you're guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if your emotions are not tempered, you get offended because somebody accused you. But to the accuser who is a liar, who is false, Teach. they take your disdain and say, yeah, you must be guilty. Yeah. And, they, and their mind cannot be changed. Yeah, That's truth. She looked up at the window, called out. He looked up out the window and called out and said, what? Who is on my side? He who? said, let's see. Let's see who, let's see who, with, who, who, who with God, who with truth, and who with the lie. Who is on my side? Who? Then what? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Throw her down. Though the two or three eunuchs are the people who carried purity and submission to God and God alone. They were in the kingdom. They were part of the church. But this is Jezebel's eunuchs who turned on her. Anything that is working in the spirit of Jezebel that her followers will turn on her. Yeah. They just will. They really don't love her. Yeah. They just love what she provides. Come on. He said, looked up at the window, called out, who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. And what did Jehu say? Throw her down. I know that ain't in the Bible. Beat her down. A man throwing a woman out the window. He said, throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down. And some of her blood splattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her. And what Jehu did? And Jehu went in and ate and drank. Jehu there went to Applebee's after, her, after he whooped Jezebel. Jehu went to Jehu went to got the, the two for twenty old Charlie's hookup. Jehu wasn't sweating her. Exactly. Here's the thing about Jehu. This is how how you can tell if it's a Jehu in you, or it's a Jezebel in you. Teach them. Elijah was anointed and powerful, but he had a problem. He was intimidated by Jezebel. Jehu, his approach 
reveals something about him and the spirit that he was walking in. Why was, why was Jehu so adamant about dealing with Jezebel? Her, her eunuchs threw her out the window with no sense of worry. He goes to eat and drink something afterward because Jehu, Jehu's enemy was not Jezebel. Jehu's enemy was Baal. Baal was the God of Jezebel. It was the source by which that's why God could allow an anointed queen of Israel, a running prophet and, a, and an effeminate man to be dealt with because this is what God did. God through Jehu gave the, gave the, the indignation not against, Je not against Jezebel but against Baal, her God. Because sometimes people serve their source. They think they got it coming up with a bunch of original ideas. They think it's because, well, I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing that. But no, you're serving rebellion. You're serving stubbornness. You're serving pride. You want to be seen. You want to be heard. You want to be in front of everybody. But you're not equipped. You have not prepared. So your lack of preparation causes you to stand up there because you're serving pride. Your ego is first. And when the enemy of your ego comes up. If you, if you adhere to your enemy, if you adhere to your false idol, then you die with your idol. Yeah. Look, Jezebel served Baal, even though she was anointed. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Don't that give you some context when it says test the spirit by the spirit? Yeah. Because you might be anointed, hands laid, you might have oil, oil from the top of your head to the crown of your feet, but you're still serving Baal. Amen. Look at this. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down and some of her blood spattered the wall. Jehu went in and ate and drank. Take care of that cursed woman, he said, and bury her for she was a king's daughter. When they went to find her, wasn't no remains left. Second Kings 10, 18. Quickly. We're talking about an overcomer. See, Jehu is an overcomer. This is the spirit. This is the one who confronts these spirits. Certain things have to be addressed. Listen, I have learned that when you do not say anything, things do not change. If you are under the impression that you're going to hope that they're going to change because you didn't say nothing, they have already overridden the Holy Spirit in the manifestation of their behavior. Teach. They're already not listening to God. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to get him to act right. He overriding God. If he ain't listening to God, he ain't going to listen to you. You need to, find, you need to find another area of influence. You need to go into intercession yeah. because words are not working. Yeah. Sometimes you have to make your stand. I cannot divorce him and, 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 and we're not going to be separated. So I'll just stand in holiness and sanctification. Because he said, my influence of sanctification will, uh, will influence, will sanctify the unbeliever. What does it say? Then, then Jehu. Jehu. Mm -hmm. Come on. Then Jehu brought all the people together and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little. Stop. <sighs> just, uh, just high five something. Brandon, just high five me. Thank you, man. <sighs> Look at this. You would have thought Je with Jezebel it was over. Jezebel wasn't the culmination of, what, of the anointing that was in Jehu. Jehu was an enemy of the enemy. Because sometimes you get a one person fixed, but the situation is not dealt with. Didn't we say that? that didn't we say that the overcomer? Oh, Jesus. Succeed in dealing with a problem or a difficulty. Jehu was the one, he brought people together, and he said, Ahab served Baal a little. Oh, no, he ought to be all right. You know, it's just a little bit of sin. It's just a little bit, a little bit of fornication. It's just a little bit of rebellion. <laughs> Jehu had discernment enough to say, if you're dealing with it, if you're serving it a little, if you're serving a little bit of an idol, 
You got, you, got, you got the Bible back to front. You got an office and you anointed, but you're still playing with the horoscope. Jehu was the Jesus. one to deal with the little bit. He, he didn't let that pass. Jesus. He said he served Baal a little. Jehu will serve him much. You say, wait a minute. Jehu going to serve Baal? Read. 19. Then, mm -hmm. Now summon all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. This See that no one is... This is how cold Jehu was. Jehu, Paul said that this is apostolic. This is just high. I said, Father, I just got to get there. Paul said, I become all things to all men that I may save some. Jehu acted like he was down with Baal. See? He acted like he was a part of Baal to get all of Baal's prophets together. What does it say? One of y'all help her with that. There you go. Uh, verse 19. Now, sir, now, now summon, summon all, all the prophets, prophets of Baal. You think Jehu is a Baal worshiper. All his service and all the priests see that no one is missing because I'm going to hold a great service of Baal. Say, <laughs> Jehu, you tripping. Hey. <laughs> he, he, said, he said what I'm telling you. Go find everybody that's in, in, in new age, everybody who's an ancestral right. worshiper. Find all your witchcraft friends and invite them to church. Jehu said, see, because I know that their God's not working. Exactly. Mine do. Look, he said, see that no one is missing because I'm going to hold a great sacrifice for Baal. Anyone who fails to come will no longer live. But Jehu was acting how? Deceptively in order to destroy the servants of Baal. When your enemy is the source, it's not about one person. Teach the people. See, to, steal, to take glory upon yourself and steal the focus Jesus. is a manifestation of Jezebel. You because God gets the glory. Yes. Only God is glorified. Yes. Jehu acted deceptively. You say, wait a minute. Deception is, is deception of God. Well, it said God will send them a strong delusion. Yeah. Ezekiel 14 says, yep. if you build up idols, in your heart then I'll speak to the, I'll speak to you through the prophet according to the idols that are in you so now Jehu who just took out Jezebel said Jezebel got some followers so we're going to have a meeting everybody come on out we're going to do this thing for Baal we got catering for Baal he said, but he was deceit, but he, but he uh, was acting deceptively in order to do what? what, what in order to destroy the service of Baal. Mm -hmm. Jehu said, call an assembly in honor of Baal. So they proclaimed it because they did not have true discernment. Mm. Oh, exactly. You already serving a lie. Jesus. So what problem is it to get you out to get you out your hiding place? All I need to do is give you an invitation to get you out your hiding place to destroy your devil. Mm -mm -mm. Look, then Jehu, he said, Jehu said to the keeper, wait a minute, 21. Then he sent word through Israel and all the servants of Baal came. Not one stayed away. They mm. crowded into the temple of Baal until it was full from one end to the other. He filled up the place. And Jehu said to the keeper of the wardrobe, bring robes for all the service of Baal. Mm, mm, mm. So he brought out robes for him. He said, I need to see because they're being located. We, we need to robe them to identify them. Let me tell you a secret. You better robe the, word on the, the word on the talif was not a one-time word because sometimes it's a locator. Yeah. You're drawing witchcraft and warfare because you will not submit to the order that's on the house. Mm. Jesus, the Bible says that it took for um, Judas to find Jesus, to locate who was hunting him. Yeah. Without Judas, they could not find him. Yeah. Because he wasn't looking like a Pharisee. Come on. Because he wasn't all wrapped in garb. Yeah. It was because he looked regular and they didn't know how to find him. They was waiting for, they was, they was looking for the outward manifestation of power. They was looking for a halo. They was looking for him to be floating one inch off the ground. And they could not find him. Why did Jesus allow that? Because he was showing you that sometimes you got to be discreet to, to walk consistently in power. 
Sometimes Whoa. the fact, so you see, sometimes the, the, the Bible says this is a way of mm. God. Mm. What does God do? He said, mm. he said, always watch and pray. He said, because no man knows the hour mm. when I'm coming. He said, I don't reveal no everything to you. Come. I need you to stay constantly ready so that you are perpetually in a state of receiving me. You're always ready to receive morning, noon, and night, year in, year out, week, day, month, second, minute, hour. You're always ready to receive Whoa. me. And you don't have to watch for me because you're always ready. Exactly. Glory be to God. He said, but I don't need, oh, 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 here come a false prophet. I seen, a, uh, uh, the Lord showed me in the year 2023, Donald Trump going to eat some raisin bread, and the raisin bread going to have a picture of the United States, and they're going to send a bomb to Asia. And you're like, oh, my God, we need to do something about it. <laughs> no, that's how y'all be doing. He said, no, use discretion. Yeah. Use discretion. That's Sometimes, sometimes, it, it, sometimes it lets you in environments that when you come in with a certain approach, the door is shut to you. Mm, mm, mm. Because sometimes, mm, mm, mm. sometimes your wardrobe mm, mm, mm. reveals your ideology. Yes, yes. Because you're good. not because you're, because you're not an Orthodox Jew. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes you're. God, sometimes your doctrine mm -hmm. is confused because you're walking in Judaism mm -hmm. even though you're a New Testament mm -hmm. believer of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on. That's good. He said, put it away. Say, put it away. Put it away. There you go. Jehu said to the keeper of the wardrobe, bring robes. Robes for all the servants of Baal. So he brought out robes for them. Then Jehu and Jonadab, son of Rechab, went into the temple of Baal. Mm. No. They just stay hidden in the temple. That's, that's just power. Mm. 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 That's just power. That's, 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 you, you're no longer insulated. You're not, this, this is not I can only demonstrate in church. Mm -hmm. he, went, he went over to the mosque. He went over to the temple of Baal. Mm. 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 He said, look around and see what? That no one serves the Lord who is here with you, only servants of Baal. Jehu went direct in the middle of the enemy's camp. He exactly. made sure it wasn't nothing but unbelievers all around him. Teach the people. It says, As soon as Jehu was finished making the burnt offering, he ordered the guards and officers, go in and kill them. Let no one escape. So they cut them down with the sword. The guards and the officers the bodies out and then entered the inner shrine of the temple of Baal. They brought the sacred stone out of the temple of Baal and burned it. They demolished, and they demolished the sacred stone of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal. And people have used it for latrin this to this day. They invited everybody to church and tore everybody up. See, this is why mm. people who have influenced you that your job is just to speak how the person going to prosper and they're going to get a job is so inerrant. That's why there's so much fallibility in it, or it's at least a lower level of what the prophetic gift is. Because this prophet was so adamant against the enemies, he did not stop at Jezebel. He realized Baal was the problem. And everything that served Baal, he destroyed. He, matter of fact, he attacked, he set it up. See, if, if, you, if you cannot be touched, if you cannot be around people, if you are so hypersensitive to the fact that you so anointed and if somebody else touch you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you sick, you're going to die, you're going to get cursed, then you don't have it. Because if you don't have it, you can't go nowhere. Jehu said, I'm going to get in the middle of it. I'm going to find everything that is, that is not like God and destroy it. Jezebel, Ahab, and the prophets of Baal. Go to the slides real quick and we'll be done. Jehu was the bully prophet. Don't lose sight. Get discernment because every, every prophet, every apostle is not going to coddle you. You don't need you don't need you don't need somebody around you who's just gonna permit for whatever to go on and allow the enemy to run its course and steal your family from out of your household. Eventually something gotta stand up.
Because I can tell you, Jezebel was a spirit. She ate anointed people for lunch. Being anointed was not high enough for Jezebel. She controlled anointed people. She persuaded them. She manipulated gifts. She used witchcraft, manipulation, intimidation, and control to take in. She had an eye for weakness and underdeveloped prophetic people. Yeah. And she found them. And she became their leader. And her husband did not have strength enough to deal with her. But Jehu, see, sometimes Jehu can rise up in you. Yeah. I say this, I say, look, once you stop, I don't know who I'm speaking to, once you stop acting like Ahab, you'll stop getting the outcomes of Ahab. Once you stop acting like Jezebel, you'll stop getting the outcomes of Jezebel. See, when you really got discernment, sometimes you call it like you see it. Yeah. Yep. I thank God for the person who saw me as a thief, and I was a, I was a full-blown thief. He used to go in the mall, stealing all the time. And I remember they said, he's a thief. And I wasn't stealing nothing at the time, but I was still a thief. But she said, you know what? We can't catch you, but every time you come around, something missing. Do you have that level of discernment? Can you understand? I cannot quite put my finger on it. But the outcomers, the outcomes are not favorable. Yeah. Can you talk? Can you pinpoint it? Yeah. Because it wouldn't be deception if they were just so easily caught. Yeah. It's just very deceptive. That deception causes people. It has an eye. Listen, you are a target. It has an eye. For anointed people. Yes. It's either trying to build you up to get to make you an enemy of God mm -hmm. or render you ineffective. Okay. Look at this. I'm telling you, husbands, you got an eye for it. If your husband tells you to stop, you need to stop. Come on now. I don't make no bones about it. Because you don't have to be at the, epi at the epitome of spirituality to see some danger. And sometimes danger is packaged in anointing and gifted in spiritual things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know that's too much for you. No, okay. So overcomers arise. This is how it works. This is how it works. John 16, 33. These things I have I'm spoken. Be done with you. Go ahead. Okay. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In me you might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation. Uh -huh. But be of good cheer. Yeah. I have overcome the world. This is prophecy mixed with faith. Jesus is prophesying. He is showing you. I need you to hear this. Turn, look, turn off your church, turn off your church uh, uh, timer. Because you need to know this. Because I can tell you, you don't listen and you get caught up. God be merciful to you, especially those that despise and reject knowledge. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. Where's my peace at? In Christ, in Jesus. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Jesus was prophesying. But this prophecy is a prophecy that's mixed with faith. You have to put works with this prophecy. If you do not put, if the prophetic word is just, is just a concept, it's just something spoken to you, and you do not put measures in place to put faith with the word. He said, you overcome the world. Look at this. In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have what? So I'm confident that Jesus has overcome the world. I'm in him. So if, I, if he overcame the world and I'm in him, what does that make me? All right, next, John, 1 John 4 and 4 says what? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is within you than he that this is, is in prophecy. the world. This is prophecy that has to be mixed with faith. You have to put works with this prophetic word. It is not just a word that's going to overpower, overpower you, twist your hand, hand behind your back, put a gun to your head, and make you be an overcomer. 
He said, you are of God. It's already set. It's already established. And you have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Next, 1 John 2, 13 says I write what? unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have Lord, known the father. Understand. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him and that from the beginning. He just stepped him out. I can't see. From the beginning. I lost my spot. I have written unto you, young Fuck. men, mm -hmm. because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. This is the changing of a mindset. Let me show you how a prophetic word can benefit you. What he spoke here was, is that I'm an overcomer, and you're already an overcomer. Your mindset has to change to begin to walk like an overcomer that you already are. Come on with it. Yeah. You have to walk like what was prophesied to you because once the prophetic word is released, those that mix faith with the word overcome. It's a mind shift. Your mind has to change from the fact that whatever I was is not conditional to what this is saying in my life. He's saying you already are overcomer. So it's already been prophesied that you are overcomer. You are overcomer so you don't have to run from problems. You don't have to run from difficult situations because you go into the difficult situation and overcomer. Only the person whose mind has not been changed avoids the difficult situation because they're looking to consequences and not the ability to affect. I don't want to say nothing because the consequence, they may push back, they may argue, they may, they may leave. See, whenever your, mind is not, whenever your mind is not renewed, you convince yourself of the outcomes even though they're not true. Deal with this difficult situation. Deal with the problem. It's for you to deal with the problem. Here's the thing. We don't got to we don't got to agree to disagree. Who told you that lie? He said, how can we walk together except we agree? We matter of fact, we're called to agree. We've been created to agree. It's not hard when it's the Holy Spirit in him, the Holy Spirit in me. It's not hard to find agreement. But I go in as an overcomer because I'm not afraid to have the hard conversation if it's necessary. How much are we avoiding? See, the, 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 the spirit of an overcomer will, will deal with the difficulty because it is a discerner of my path. It show me which way I need to go. Because if, 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 if I stand, if I correct, if I speak the truth, and it causes a person to move out the way, then that means the door is wide open for me as an overcomer to continue in the will of God. Exactly. Exactly. Does that make sense? Not hmm. That's good. Hmm. See, in order for, for this prophecy to come to pass, they have to have a mindset of faith, which makes the word sure. Jesus opened the book and he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. And then he walked in it as an overcomer. He did everything that it said. Even though it had not been manifested yet. See, this is where fulfillment comes from. This is where access to the power comes from. This is where you stand in what he said prophetically and walk as an overcomer. An overcomer is the one who deals with. Look at your neighbor and say, deals with. It's the one who deals with difficult situation. It's the one that deals with problems. It's the one that stands in the face of adversity. You're gonna, there's going to be time you're going to tell people no and they're going to push back and they're going to do every manner, especially when they know something about you. They're going to try to find whatever they can in order to keep their place in error. Yeah. But God has made you an overcomer. Demons will oppose you. Demons will try to stand against you. Because if your enemy is a person and not a spirit, 
then you'll always get distracted from the real source of the problem and it will perpetuate itself year after year after year. But I do not believe that is the will of God for you. So the Lord gave me an assignment that is to lay hands on the overcomers. So if you will, stand to your feet. He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You need boldness because you serve a bold God. There is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Every tongue, internally or externally, that rise up, rises up against you, it will fall. Amen. It's the Lord himself who is showing himself strong in and through you and bringing about a change in your life. So the Lord said in part, if you will, come to the altar, line up across the front, in Jesus' name. I believe that we all need this impartation.